Talking trotters now here at Maribor on a beautiful day. Dan Malecki joins me. Hello, Dan. Yeah, how are you, Paul? I'm super. What a great day of racing we've had today, firstly, so far. Um, we won't be able to cover off on all of them, but geez, there's been some highlights. Cravosh Dior, he was awesome. Plymouth Chubb yeah. again chasing. It's building some really nice rivalries with some of these three-year-old trotters, aren't they? They are. Cravash Dior continues to get better. He had a soft run today and was entitled to win, and he did that, but he's got a presence about him now. Uh, Plymouth Chubb is going to be ODM for the rest of the series now, so it's going to make it, I'd say, impossible for Plymouth Chubb. He still went great, but uh, Courage Stride, he had a strong hit-out, didn't he? Yep. Chris Lang wasn't a, afraid to have him uh, to have a hit-out there. Strong so early. He must have thought that he, he, he needed that sort of hard work, but uh, good luck for anything that might be Cravash Dior in the, in the Colts and Goldings ranks. He's at the top of his game and um, um, no Harry Stamper to deal with uh, this time around. Um, mind you, that will set up some fantastic clashes going forward. It's a unique thing too, isn't it? Because it's hard at the end of the season. So many people are looking forward to it. Uh, horses progressing like Cravash Dior that just since the derby, I think he's taken it to another step and keeps continuing to take it. But then you have Harry Stamper, who's he's been in the paddock. He's probably enjoying every blade of grass that yep. he's eating while these boys are out, still bashing themselves up, but having a lot of fun doing it and promoting the sport so well. Yeah, oh, look, there's no doubt about that. And, and sometimes we get to see, it's great when we see them clash all the time, but every now and then you like to see them come with a picket, fin uh, picket fence next to their name, which is likely to happen uh, by the time that they next clash. And they might be able to uh, take that next step as four-year-olds to, to step it up. Uh, into the open class. We've seen uh, a number of four-year-olds been able to do that in the in the trotting ranks. Um, with uh, well, Queen Elida was able to do it uh, into her four-year-old year, and of course Mufasa Metro was another one. Yep. And I'm sure those two horses are right up there uh, yep. as well. When you're putting them alongside what they've done as three-year-olds, alongside the two horses I've just mentioned, so I don't think they'll have any problem getting into that uh, the higher grade against the open class horses. In fact, the open class horses better watch out. I think it's so exciting because those horses you just said, Prison Artiste, um, the Elder Baron Zeus, yeah, exciting yeah. horses, a lot of speed, all four-year-olds progressing. They're going to be five-year-olds. Yeah. Then we've got this wave of three-year-olds coming through. The trotting ranks in Australia, I'm going to say, are so exciting to see. And I, I, I love it. And I know you love the trotters. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it, something quite unique. Yeah, there was. And look, to be to be fair, I think my highlight of Inter Dominion night was actually the trotters' grand final. Yep. Um, they didn't necessarily go that hard in the early part. They certainly didn't in the pacing final, but it produced a really good finish. Uh, we didn't have to rely. It's funny, the Inter Dominion, every track, there was uh, sprint lanes at every track. Um, but the only race that the, the sprint lane had an effect on was the pacing grand final. But in the trotters, it was a tough performance. It was a great drive from uh, Greg Sugars and just understanding his horse so perfectly. Majestuoso slipping away and Just Believe running him down. So uh, it was a highlight race on the night. And therefore, I think Just Believe's performance had to be, I think, my highlight for the trotters of the year. I take my hat off. I've done an interview with Greg, um, and it may have gone up before or after this one. I don't know which way I'll put them in. I'll worry about that in a sec. Anyone watches me stuff knows that it doesn't always work that way. The, the, the pressure on Greg, and, and they won the first heat of the series with Just Believe, and, and I spoke to him afterwards about winning it, um, and the amount that they put forward for our industry um, leading up to it, and just you know what it actually meant to those guys, to then turn around and for them to win the last race, if you like, of the series, I think it was a pretty fitting result, because they were outstanding. People say, oh, we see Jess and Greg all the time. They were outstanding. The, the, the amount of content that they gave day in, day out, for anyone that rang, anyone that spoke to them was just sensational. And I think a real highlight of our Inter Dominion Carnival, as were you know, everyone else. I think everyone stepped up to the fore and really know we've got to start promoting this industry so strongly. Yeah, no doubt. And I must admit, I, I mentioned the highlight in racing performance, but even my heart goes out to Jess and to Greg. I mean, we know they're pretty experienced, even though they're still considered young, pretty experienced. I really admire their professionalism, the dedication that they put in. Not that anyone else in harness racing hasn't got that, but I think we've seen their progression. Jess had a really good full-time job. She's had a lot of experience in a lot of different areas. Areas, left that, concentrate on the horses. Clearly, she's a horsewoman. Uh, and the match with her husband, the money that they've been making, they're pouring it into their property. They're only going to get better and bigger. And, and it was a pretty special moment um, to, to see them and share that. It was special for them, and you could tell. And I think it was special for a lot of other people uh, around the periphery that know them and appreciate the hard work, the dedication that they put in, and the fact that you know any Victorian horse is able to win a, 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 in a Dominion, particularly at home. Uh, it's an important for everyone else within uh, a harness racing. But the race itself was terrific. And it was, it was a Group 1 drive. And uh, often a great drive is associated with a win, you know. But that was just 
it was as Dennis Cometti would say, it was centimeter perfect. Yeah. Well, I actually watched it, and uh, yeah, we were saying the same thing. As soon as he moved. He just wins because yeah, he went through. The second horse was awesome, Majestuoso. Yeah. Great to see him back. It's funny, great to see him back to form. Hasn't really been out of form. It's just that he hasn't been winning because, and, but just terrific. And then to see him win the Cranbourne Cup the other night, I think Andy and Kate, that, that's almost going to be called the Andy and Kate uh, Cranbourne yeah. Cup. But what they're, they're, they're able to deliver with that race. I mean, it's exciting for him. We're coming into a massive summer of racing. Get horses like Majestuoso and them guys stepping up. Just believes back in work. I believe he came back in work today. So he only had a week off getting ready for the summer. It's going to be around. And what the Trotters have. Have is so exciting with the Great Southern Star, the Grand Prix, Dullard Cup, yeah. uh, the Mar- Elderbaran Park, Murray Mile. If Benigo's going to be almost the start of it on um, September, uh, sorry, January. Cup going to go night. seven, yeah, yeah, Cup Night. So yeah. it's so exciting. You must really look forward to seeing you know these high class superstar trotters really you know stepping up to the fore. You know, I've always, when I was brought up as a kid, there was something about the summertime and harness racing. Uh, they they seem connected. So the big races, summertime, nighttime. Warmer weather, sure, all of that put together, but you expect the big racing to be at this time of the year. I reckon everybody involved in harness racing, participant wise, would expect that as well. So you want to have those top quality horses. There are so many options for them, and whether it's the pacing ranks or the trotting ranks, you know they're going to be good. You know they're going to be as good as they can possibly be. Uh, the programming now for the trotters is exemplary, particularly through the latter part of the summer and the early part of the autumn, with all those races that you talked about. And, and I think right at the moment, well, just believe will go in as a number one seed there's not a lot of difference but you know between the quality and the class of a number of those horses it'll often come down to barrier draws depending on what distance it's going to be so uh, unless, just believe probably has to take that next step to then dominate all the way through he did it through the the inner dominion series but depending on what distance it's going to be there's no guarantee that he'll be able to just dominate like he did there's a number of horses putting their hands up and i think that's great it's going to be very exciting for for the uh, for the trotting series in the next couple of months in particular and uh, like we mentioned before be interesting to see those three olds will probably go for a spell because they've they have they've to. gone through breeders crown and, and for the vic bread so we're probably not going to see uh, many of them if any go through those races in the early part of the year but it'll only be a few months in you come come about march or april that could be a different story i know there's a sneaky new race on the radar too from queensland i'm not allowed to say what it is but i do know it's there and that will become on the radar for quite a few of those and be super exciting. That, that could be our winter holiday. You and I might end up there for okay, the, well, for, I like for, that. For the winter You're holiday. You're good at getting sponsors, so <laughs> I don't, you know, I've got the right man to rely on if we're going to get there. We say about the high-class horses, unfortunately, we're robbed of bulk for, for brilliance yeah. um, coming out of the series, but we've got Majestic Mountain over there in New Zealand as well to add that intrigue back for the Great Southern Star, and I know Greg and Nina Hope are targeting that race. They're targeting and bringing in, uh, him out there. Uh, there's going to be a couple of other trotters potentially coming out from New Zealand. So that then spices it up. It's not like we say, right, we know all the, the usual offenders. All of a sudden, we're going to have these other horses coming out. Yeah, and that's a very good point. We've missed the the New Zealanders uh, being a part of our carnivals. There's been a, a tiny little sprinkle, and to lose Bolt for brilliance, uh, it, you know, it hurt. It, it was the only Kiwi trained horse in, in either of the pacing or trotting, and, and, and he went and missed there. So we, we need their presence in our carnivals. It's so important. Uh, so I do hope we don't just get Majestic Man. We get a number of those key uh, horses in, in both uh, of the gates uh, because they just add so much strength to our carnival. It's hard to envisage, really, when you think about it in harness racing over the years. There's plenty of horses with NZ at the end of their name, but there hasn't been as many that have been trained in New Zealand coming over here. COVID's obviously affected it. Uh, our racing's been really good, but it sort of goes up another notch, doesn't it, when the yeah. Kiwis come? There was a nice horse the overnight too, Artie by the Hill uh, for uh, Jenna and Robert Dunn. Uh, won a Group 3 at Auckland the other night too. It was very impressive. Whether he's up to that and whether they bring him out, I don't know. But they have got some really nice ones. I think the other part, Sunday Sun, like I was fortunate enough to be over there for the Dominion Handicap. We talk about highlights and I didn't show put this one on you but yeah. Jesse Mountain and uh, Sunday Sun the battle that they had one was sensational and, and the buzz in that stable afterwards it was just incredible on what was a high class day it was so good like you said we forget about how good it is to have these rivals come across Sunday Sun will never come to Australia because he wears two lugging poles and they can't wear them over here but he's a brilliant horse uh, but it's so much fun when you get that intrigue of the Kiwis and they've got a lot of very, very nice trotters over there. Yeah, oh, look, they have indeed. I, I remember, you know, at a really impressionable stage in, in, in my life, and then when I got to be calling, I, one of the early stages when I took on this job at Harness Race in Victoria, sort of, sort of through the mid, the mid 90s to the, to the late 1990s, and you had your Pride of Petite Wagon Apollo, you had your Night Pistol, <laughs> um, Buster Hanover. Buster Hanover was the horse that uh, he, he made me want to get a trotter. 
which I ended up doing. And I went through Mark Purton. I ended up getting a trotter called Wahimo Hanger, and we got him as a, as a yearling. We had to be patient, wait for him to come through. And Mark assures me he was every bit as good as Buster Hanover and, and Pride of Petit, but he broke down early. He, he won some big races and all that sort of stuff. But that, those, that presence, I mean, who could ever forget Pride of Petit's performances, winning into Dominions, uh, the Adelaide into Dominion, and that finish with Night Pistol and Wagon Apollo. That's yep. something to behold. It's probably one of the best um, trotting finishes you'll ever see. And then just after that, uh, you, you had your, your Sundown's Way was coming across. You had Africa. And then it stepped up even another notch, I think, when Lyle Creek and, and just after him take a moment as well. Yeah, no, it was, it was sitting here at Maribyrnong, just having some lunch. And I was looking up at the honour board. And I've always, like, I had a great association with Graham Johansson and, and True Roman. Looking at the honour board, and there's a horse called Young Trooper. I remember driving him at the oh, trials yeah. when I was 16 years old, right? and it was the greatest buzz ever. He won yeah. the inaugural Redwood here yeah. on Redwood Day, wow. so I mean, it was a great one. They are on the track, Dan. Very quickly, your highlights, you said there about Just Believe. Any of the other sort of highlights coming through for the last year? Look, I definitely Just Believe. I think it, it's fresh in my mind as well. I tell you what I've really been impressed with. It, it's the quality of Trotter at the, at the younger stage, the two-year-old ranks, and in particular the Phillies this year. I, I think the Phillies are better than the Colts at the moment. Um, what we've seen with Susan is her name, Rockin' with Attitude, and there's a few others that are right on the periphery there as well. So it's the best depth in two-year-old fillies in the trotting ranks I've ever seen. So that augurs really well. It does indeed, and it seems to be a lot of fillies, doesn't there? We were saying before, like all the Antons, we're saying, trying to think of the good ones. These fillies just keep coming yeah. through. They're so fast, so balanced. Yeah. They really are. Dan, yeah. thank you. Um, I had a great chat with you earlier on in the year. I'd like to do more stuff with you, but thank you for joining me for the Talking Trotters. I'm just here at Maribyrnong and having a bit of fun. Always love hearing you. Love hearing your calls, and thank you very much. Keep up the passion, mate, and well done for your call at the end of the minute. It was brilliant, mate. So uh, thank, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, Paul. Any time. These gaps between race, races are long enough, so if you're on track, any, any time to fill in the 40 minutes, I'm putting my hand up. I'm here, mate, if you want me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, mate. 2020 two-year-old Breeders' Crown Champion, setting a race record previously held by Wolna. On a streak wins the Breeders' Crown. O'Brien two-year-old trotting Colt of the Year. On a streak upsets in the William Walbert Memorial. One of the fastest two-year-old trotters to ever stand in Australasia. He's such a professional. As soon as he saw open air, he just took off. Son of leading U.S. sire Cantor. On a streak, standing his first season at Cobbety Equine Farm in 2022.